Elder Holland, His Eminence, Timothy Cardinal Dolan. eloquent. Thank you. My, oh my, thank you, everybody. Thank you. I look out in amazement and deep appreciation for your company this evening. What a great crowd. We, we Catholics would call this a two-collection uh, crowd, folks. This is tremendous. Uh, thank you. It's, believe me, it's an honor and a joy for me to be with you here at the New York uh, LDS Professional Association. Thank you very much. And to get this, for you to give me an award on my vision, I needed it. I was at the eye doctor earlier this this week, and he told me I needed new glasses. So for you to award me on, on a vision is good. I'm honored to be sitting at the table with uh, Elder Holland, uh, a great leader whom I admire and respect very much, and whose words I look forward to hearing in a couple moments. Uh, Elder Holland was, I said, Elder, could you describe kind of your work to me, your ministry? And he said, yeah, pretty much, I kind of do everything you do. I can kind of do everything that you as a cardinal do. And I thought, oh, was that true? I said, well, I'll tell you what, I can do something you can't do. I can kiss your wife, you can't kiss mine. And Patricia, I'm thrilled to be sitting with you too. I'm glad you're at the table. <laughs> Let me be heartfelt. I feel very much at home with you. And I think that's because you and the LDS family seem just to radiate a very sincere friendliness and hospitality that I've experienced often in the past and is extraordinarily uh, present to me this evening. I think that's deepened, is it not? Because uh, you and I, members of the LDS family, and yes, members of the Catholic family, have um, a real cherished concord on so many issues. Religious freedom, the dignity of the human person, the sacredness of human life, uh, uh, a solicitude for the immigrant, the poor, a preference for peace over war in the world, a defense of, of marriage and family as, as God has revealed. Uh, you and I also enjoy a beautiful amity and agreement when it, comes in the when it comes to the defining nature of faith. We believe in the sovereignty of Almighty God. We, re we believe in the objective truth of revealed religion. And we believe, yes, that one of our sacred responsibilities is to bring the truth of that religion to the public square. Um, you and I believe with our Jewish brothers and sisters, and yes, with our Islamic brothers and sisters, that these days, those of us who share those values, we need to stand together in that, in that uh, virtue that Pope John Paul II made a household word. We need to stand together in solidarity. We need to be together shoulder to shoulder because a lot of those values are no longer considered chic. They're no longer accept, uh, considered acceptable. And a world that sometimes considers faith and religion superstitious at best, dangerous at worst. Um, our Jewish brothers and sisters who have just come off their high holy days have taught us that God prefers to deal with us as a community. That religious, yes, deeply personal, but never private. And that the essence of our revealed religion that we hold in common is that in the words of Billy Graham, our role is to change our conduct to conform to God's design, not to try to alter God's word to conform to, conform to our wants, opinions, our urges. We hold, we defend, and we proclaim our faith unfailingly with love and respect for the other. 
because once again, as Pope St. John Paul II said, our duty is to propose, never to oppose. And you know what? We also share a basic belief that all of those tenets that I've just tried to summarize that we hold in common are not only utterly religious, they are basically down-home American. They are not alien to the genius of this grand republic that we're proud to call our earthly home. They're at the very heart of the American enterprise. We are proud of the fact, are we not, that as we survey our American history, every cause that we consider to be enlightened, every cause that we consider having enhanced the nobility of the human person and defended the sacredness of human life has been religiously inspired. Historians tell us that the very establishment of American identity and the very, uh, the very fight for freedom that we call the American, uh, American Revolution was inspired by the great um, by, uh, by the great revivals, by the great religious re uh, reawakening. It may have been the, the road to abolish slavery. It may have been the promotion of workers' rights. It may have been the extension of democracy uh, to our entire population. It may have been, well, the temperance movement, although we Catholics were less than enthusiastic about that one. It might have been the peace movement in the 1960s. It might have been the great civil rights uh, uh, advocacy in the 50s and 60s led by religious pastors. It might have been the fight against poverty and now the right to life issue. Whatever, every issue that has made America great, every issue that has made us a light to the world, every issue that we now cherish as patriotic Americans was religiously inspired, which leads us to believe that America is impoverished when it does not have a place in the public square. We recall the great insight of Alexis de Tocqueville, whom historians consider perhaps the most perceptive commentator on the American experiment, who said that America will survive, and not only survive, but prosper, prosper, not because of its political system, but because of its freedom of religion, and because faith, religion, church, belonging, creed, and the pursuit of virtue were held sacred in the American dream. And this evening coming together in the amity, the friendship, and the respect and sense of renewal that, that gathers us this evening, we're reminded of the words of the father of our country, that this great experiment in democracy cannot survive unless it is based upon religion. This award I interpret as an affirmation of that and as a validation that you and I are in solidarity. Thank you very much and God bless you. Thank you, Your Eminence. We are deeply honored by your presence here and, and by your friendship. Thank you so much. We will long remember your inspiring words and your poignant call to action. President David Buckner will now introduce tonight's honorary keynote speaker, Elder Jeffrey R. Holland. President Buckner serves as the stake president of the New York, New York Stake for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. For those of you who are not of our faith, a stake president is similar to a Catholic bishop in that he has ecclesiastical responsibilities for a number of congregations in a geographical area. In President Buckner's